Hello everyone and welcome back to the Crafty Yellow Camper. Today we're going to be making a snow globe card using the new snow globe dies that are available in the autumn winter seasonal catalogue due out on the 4th of September and this lovely set snow front which actually coordinates really really well with waterfront. I really like a line drawn um, set because it gives you such good effects so very easily as I'm sure you'll see in this video. The other set that we're going to be using is hashtag Elfie. Um, with the children that I look after we do Elf on the Shelf every year and as soon as I saw this I knew I had to have it. It's cute um, and it's going to come in really useful not only for cards but for tags and our clues to see where the elves are this year. Okay so let's get started. First of all, I've die cut the snow globe um, using the dies just from plain Whisper White and we're going to give it some colour using uh, three different inks. So first of all, we're using Bermuda Bay and then we're moving on to Pacific Point and finishing off with Knight of Navy. So let me just open up the ink cases. These are the old style ink cases. Okay, now to ink on my circle, I'm going to be using a good old fashioned barber's brush. I use various different methods for inking. Um, sometimes sponge daubers for small areas, other times larger pieces of sponge, um, sometimes a smaller brush. But I found with an all over area like we're going to do today, that the barber's brush works really well uh, to enable you to control your colour and get a good blend. So let's get started. So just give the barber's brush a good dab in the ink and then starting off, give it a swirl around. Always start off from your piece of cardstock so that you're blending the ink onto the cardstock and that way you won't have any harsh lines. Okay, so that's our first color. Now we're gonna move on to our next color. Now you'll notice that I haven't washed the brush in between as long as you start with the lighter colour before you move on to the darker colour that shouldn't be too much of an issue um, obviously don't move from a navy blue for instance like night of navy onto a pale pink because you will mess up your ink pad so we've got the pacific point on there and we're now blending in some night of navy with the barber's brush i've got a stray stray hair there i think it's come out Okay, and just using a swirling action coming in from the side of the piece of cardstock and moving it around with my fingers. Now, if you don't want to end up with inky fingers, then wear a pair of gloves. Don't do what I usually do and end up doing these kind of things before going out for dinner and end up covered in ink. Okay, now you might notice that I've laminated my piece of grid paper, which makes clearing up nice and easy with a wipe. If you get any stubborn little bits and pieces on your laminated grid paper, you can always use an alcohol prep wipe or um, some surgical spirit, which is basically rubbing alcohol uh, to our American friends um, on a piece of cloth, piece of tissue, and you will get all the little bits and pieces off and it will take glue off as well if you've got glue on your laminated surface. If you haven't got an A3 laminator then sometimes it's just as easy to work on a silicon mat or if you're lucky enough to have a glass mat one of those works really well too. Okay so there we are with our inked circle. Now what I did on my other cards was that I used one of our spritzers and in it is a little bit of surgical spirit or rubbing alcohol. Um, and in that as well, I have mixed some of our all purpose ink, basically shimmer paint. You only need a few drops, give it a good shake. The alcohol will evaporate after you've sprayed it, leaving you with a nice shimmery effect. So just use from a distance and spritz over your circle. Now you will need to leave this to dry before you can carry on 
and stick anything to it because it won't um, won't allow you to stick things like dimensionals or wet glue to it because it's wet. So we're just going to put that to one side and I'm going to bring in one that I did earlier. Just give my mat a clean. And obviously the rubbing alcohol in there has helped get off any bits and pieces. So these are some that I did earlier. Um, this one, I don't know if the camera's catching that shimmer. I think just hold it that way. There, hopefully you can see that. Um, this one I have stamped with the trees uh, on the hill from Snowfront and then the um, smaller trees which are individual down here. I've added the little snowman and I've added the cottage from Snowfront. Okay, and on this one I've stamped the hills and then I've die cut the big and small polar bear and put some shimmer paint on those okay the polar bear dies sorry I'll bring that back in the polar bear dies are included in the set of dies that come with the snow globe framelits I haven't actually bought the stamp set yet because I discovered quite early on that the snow front images are pretty much a perfect size to fit in to the snow globe okay so while we wait for our snow globe piece that we've just sprayed to dry off a little bit so that I can carry on. I'm just going to show you the base. In the snow globe dies you get a blank for the base and then you get this very pretty filigree effect and what I've done is I've cut one from early espresso, oh actually no soft suede sorry about that, and one from crumb cake and all I'm going to do is just use a tiny bit of glue if you're not comfortable using the Tombow because you're worried you'll get too much, then by all means use something like a quickie glue pen or our fine nib glue pen that we carry. Um, and just pop a little bit of glue, tiny, tiny dots onto some of the corners. And the beauty of wet glue is it gives you a little bit of wiggle room. So you can then just mount up and give it a little wiggle around to get it in the right place, give it a squidge and leave it to dry. Now you might see that I've got some bits of glue that have come through because it's really difficult when you're using wet glue like Tombow, but don't worry, those will dry clear. Um, if you end up with a lot of glue behind there, you can always sprinkle some glitter over it and nobody will ever know. Okay, so that's our base for our snow globe. Now I've gone ahead and I've cut some bits and pieces to go on it. Um, I've cut some trees. These trees coordinate with the snow globe stamp set and um, are in the bundle of dies. And I've also cut out one of the little cottages that is in the snow front stamp set. And I don't know if you can see if the camera will catch it. Let me get that a little bit closer. I don't know if you can see the glitter on there. That is our new ice glitter, which is really effective. It's a little bit chunkier, well, quite a lot chunkier than our Dazzling Diamonds. Um, and all I've done is stamped it, fussy cut it with a pair of scissors, and then just added some glitter. And the wonderful thing about our stamps is that Stampin' Up! make it really easy for us to see where the glitter's going because it's already shaded where the snow would naturally land on the roof. So I'm just going to pop some mini dimensionals onto the back of my house and my trees. So just a little tip for when you're fussy cutting. Um, with something like this tiny house, the easiest thing to do when you're fussy cutting is use the back of the blades of the scissors, so nearer where they join, and turn the cardstock not your scissors and it's actually really easy and quite quick to cut out okay so we've just got some little mini dimensionals on there and our same tip works for the dimension the small dimensionals as it does for the big ones if you give them a little squidge in the middle with your thumbnail then it makes it very much easier to take the backings off of those okay and the other thing we're going to do is pop a couple onto the back of our base And we'll do 
the same thing with that. Okay, now we're almost ready to put our card together, but we are going to leave um, the snow globe just a little bit longer to give it a little bit longer to dry. And whilst it's doing that, I will stamp the greeting. Now I've picked the greeting from hashtag Elfie and it is a really nice greeting. May your Christmas be merry and full of delight with a new year that's happy and healthy and bright. And I'm going to stamp that in Knight of Navy, but you can change the colours to whatever you prefer. And these are the stitched nested labels that I'm using here. So I'm just going to give that a stamp, give it a few minutes of the ink to soak in. And there we are, if you can see that. Now, what I've done, these stitched nested labels come in lots of different sizes. And actually, they're really quite good for using up your scraps of cardstock. Um, when you actually look at the nested label itself, and here's the one I've used, it has two lines of stitching. So it has a line of stitching on the outside and a line of stitching on the inside. Now, it isn't necessary to cover the whole framelit if you just want to cut it out and use it as a label because you will only get the stitching on the inside appear on your label and the stitching on the outside will be left on whatever you've cut it out from. So I've used a thin scrap and to make it easier what I've done is I've laid it over the die like that and then cut it that way up in my big shot obviously turning the plate so I don't score into my top plate and that's actually left me with a really nice flag effect which I'll put to one side and I'll use for another greeting. It's um, a little bit small for the greeting we've just used although it would just fit but it will come in handy for lots of other things. It's a nice rectangle, it's got the flag in the end of it and it's got that nice little bit of stitching as well. So there we are and then what I've done on my label is again I've just used the stars from hashtag Alf, Elfie, keep saying Alfie, Elfie, and some Daffodil Delight. And all I'm going to do is just add a few little random stars around the tag just to give it a little bit of extra colour. There we are. Okay, let's put that to one side. I'll clean my stamp in a minute. Now we're going to move on before we put it all together to the rest of our cards. So I've got a Knight of Navy card base which opens sideways and that is half of an A4 sheet cut, <coughs> cut lengthways at 10 and a half centimetres and scored and folded at 14.8 centimetres. Um, if you're in the US watching this YouTube video, hello and thank you for watching, um, but you have slightly different size cardstock to us so I think um, it would still be half your cardstock, but you would need to check that measurement. Okay, so that's our base. And then on top of that, we're going to have an embossed panel. And I'm not sure if that embossing shows up very well on the camera or not, but I've used the Scripty embossing folder, which is a new folder to our um, auto, uh, annual catalogue. Um, it's really nice, you can actually read it. And while it isn't specifically Christmas based, I don't think many people actually study it and read the words exactly. So we're going to mount that onto the top of our card base. And I'm using wet glue. I'm actually a tape runner fan. Snail is my best friend because I get really messy with Tombow. But when you're using an embossing folder, you need something a little bit more meaty than snail um, to make it grab because it soaks into the debossed section. So wet glue is always good for that. Okay so there's our card front and then what we're going to do is stamp um, on an inside panel because obviously writing inside Knight of Navy is not very easy. So we're going back to our snow front stamps again and for this we're going to use this beautiful tree. Oh sorry I think you've got some reflection off my block on there. Um, and we're going to use some crumb cake. Just open that up, give it a good stamp, make sure it's inked up properly. Another tip for you, if you've bought this stamp set new and it's the first time you're using it, sometimes they have a little bit of residue 
on them from where they're made in the factory and you need to remove that otherwise you won't get a good stamp so what I use is a Tombow rubber which looks like this a Tombow mono rubber um, and it's basically a sand eraser it's got little bits of grit in it but it's very fine so I just give that a rub over um, my new stamps and then clean it off with a little bit of um, surgical spirit on a cloth and that just takes away any residue left in the factory and you find you'll get a much better stamp. And the other little stamp that I'm going to um, use is this tiddly little robin. There's a tiny robin and a tiny cardinal in um, the snow front set. So all we're going to do is just pop a little trio of robins on to the branches. There we go. And what I've done on my finished card, and I'll show you, is I've just used a Cherry Cobbler Blends Pen, um, which is one of our alcohol markers. And I've just done a tiny little touch onto the robins, just to give him a little red tummy. Okay, so that's the inside of our card. So we're gonna get my trusty snail for this. And we're just going to add some snail to the back of that panel. And then we are going to add it to the inside of our card, which gives us a nice white area um, to write our message to the recipient. There we are. And that little bit of stamping just gives it a little something inside and then you can either stamp your message or write your message. OK, so I think that we are probably ready now to start mounting up our card. So I'm bringing back in... And you can see nothing on my fingers. The ink has dried. The alcohol has evaporated from the shimmer spray. So we're just going to pop some dimensionals onto the back of this. Now I would normally for something this size use large <coughs> dimensionals. But I've got my small ones to hand. So we'll just pop a couple of extra ones on there. These mini dimensionals are really handy. I don't never like to waste anything. So I always use the edges of my large dimensionals but these little ones are really handy for fiddly bits and pieces so I'm just going to pull off the backs now I found it was easier to mount up my snow globe from the bottom up so we're just going to pop the base of the snow globe there try and get it level and then we're going to pull off the backs of the dimensionals on the actual globe itself there we are just flip those all over my craft room is like any of yours, I expect you'll find them everywhere. And then we can just slide, because you'll see that the top of the snow globe base is curved, but the bottom of the globe is flat. So we're just going to slide that under there, just to tuck that away so we can't see any gaps. Okay, and then we're going to go in and add our trees. Okay, let's just peel the back ends off there. Okay, and then I'm going to add the trees to the base and again I'm going to just tuck that base under there okay so that's our trees and then here's our little cottage that we stamped and glittered earlier there he is he's just going to pop in that gap there okay so you can see it's layering up quite nicely okay and finally we're going to use our tag and I'm just going to pop some dimensionals onto the back of that Again, I would usually use large dimensionals for this, but again, my small ones are nicely to hand and stick into my nail polish. Okay, there we are. And I'll we'll just take those off there. One, two, and we're nearly there. Okay, and we're just going to tuck the corner of this underneath the snow globe and it's quite nice to line it up with a line on the scripty folder just to make sure you've got it level okay I'll just whiz those out of the way oh sorry move the camera I'm still new to this YouTube business and I'm still learning how to manage to get it right okay and there we are and there's our finished card and I hope you'll agree with me that that's a really quick and really easy card really good for batch making if you have a lot of Christmas cards to send like I do um, you could make 10 or so of these at a time 
and um, although it is quite a lot of die cutting it's really not too bad and you quite whiz through it. Okay well thanks for watching and I'll be back soon with another YouTube video for you and have fun looking at the new seasonal catalogue. I'm sure you'll find that there's lots of things in there you're going to want to have to have. That's all for now. See you soon. Bye.